Okay. All right. Uh, welcome to the uh, Town of Acton Planning Board meeting for Thursday, October 7th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Um, did everyone go over the minutes? Make a motion to approve the minutes. Make a motion to accept the minutes. All in favor? Four, nothing. All right, uh, old business, there's nothing. Um, new business is two that we uh, just found out that we'll just kind of maybe set a date for a site walk or something. Um, one's for Kristen Waite, map 125, lot 017. And the other one is Mike Hershey, map 143, lot 029. I believe both of them were looking to, to go backwards. Um, but you do want to. So. It's really not much to talk about other than really setting up. If it's uh, okay with you guys to set a, um, a site walk for both of these on, you know, um, oh, next Thursday. Yeah, so it would be the 21st of October. So I'll allow ample time for notice. Yeah, I think it's 10 days. I believe it's 10 days, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you want to do it on the 21st before the meeting? Yeah. Both of them? Yeah. He says it feels that only should be. Uh, a few minutes at each, you know, uh, they're pretty cut and dry, yeah, supposedly, so. Um, and that's up to you guys if you want to do, um, oh, I had asked if he wanted to do one one week and like maybe the 14th, and he can't do the 14th. He actually has back-to-back -back weddings out of town. Um, this is the individual who um, owns and runs Lake Living Consultants. So. He was hoping to do both of them um, that night of the next planning board meeting, so we can keep everything moving forward, and then really just and then discuss them. Um, I think it's good to try and do both the same, so that both projects mm -hmm. are on the same track, and we don't have to have people coming in any more than they have to, if that's if we can accommodate it. Yeah, we can what, do one at five, and then yeah. Try to get to the next one by 5:30, and then back. close enough so that we can drive. One's on ten, one's on um, so West Shore Drive, and the one's on 13th Street. So I'm not aware of, of how far apart that is. Okay, so they're probably about uh, five minutes apart. Five minutes apart. 13th Street's by the fairgrounds, right? Well, 13th's by the fairground, and the other one's right over here, um, where we buy plants pit. Um, okay. So what, they're on different lakes. Yeah, yeah one's mouse and one's the. Uh, Square, Square, I'm assuming. Okay. Yeah. So 7:30 West Shore Drive. So yeah, it's a few miles into down West Shore Drive. So Does that work for you, Pat? Schedule-wise. What was it again? Uh, 21st. 21st. It'd be before our next meeting. Okay. Sure, that's fine. Okay. All right, we're done. John's easy. <laughs> yeah. Bevan. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Which one are you going to first? Uh, you can do, uh, I think we're all close to the 13th Street first. And then we come back honest. up here, and then we'll just come to the town hall. 13th at 5 p.m.? Yeah. And then uh, yeah, we we'll get to the other one by 5 30. Hmm. And then get back here by 6. If um, Could you do it at, like, make it 545? Uh, Got people be able to make it there for that, or I mean, I, people have work, so I just want to make sure. <laughs> yeah, I can squeeze out a little early. I'm free. Yeah, I can do it. If we do, that gives us a little bit of extra time. So if we do 4:45 on on the 21st. And which one are we going to first? We're going to go to the 13th, 13th Street. Street. Okay. First. And and which person is that for? It is that will be Mike Hershey. The third, this, this one, Mike Hershey. 
13th Street. Um, is it customary to go over um, the application? Are we allowed to do that without the people here so that we have a better understanding of what we're going to see when we go to the site walk or no? Um, I mean, you can just talk if you want to just briefly talk. I can. We'll get like the pictures up on at least on the map. Yeah, yeah. Look we'll at it. I'll yeah, the, I, can I, you I make switch it over to yeah. the just real life map? Quick question. <laughs> yep. But what do you call satellite <laughs> map? Using the same foundations. Go ahead. Yeah, Matt. that's. I can get tell from this. So. Yeah, can I ask one quick question? <laughs> yeah. Are they using the same foundations? No. No. So we're we're talking about a yeah yeah this is a it's greatest practical extent so they're going to be tearing down and, and, and probably coming in for their thirty percent expansion and everything. Um, I noticed on the email that there were two proposed practical locations on the weight application. I didn't know if you could clarify that. Uh, on on the what? On Kristen Waits. <coughs> excuse me. On Kristen Waits application, there were two. Proposed locations. They, to I told, separate. yeah, we, he took the one of them out. So one was what they want to do, and if they can't do that, then the second one was was what it is. But they, they're going for one right now, and we'll see what it goes with that. So this is the one they want, and this is parallel yeah. or perpendicular to the shore, just for clarification. Um, it's on the, um, this, that one is. Uh, perpendicular to the sh to the shore, uh, parallel to the shore. So that would be the first one, I believe. It shows a 13th Street. West that's shore. West Shore. Oh, I don't know what's up there. I'm sorry. I was looking at the map. You have to give me a second. I don't. Uh, there we go. Maybe an extra week to practice. All this well, not having a mouse makes using the GIS <laughs> extremely complicated. <laughs> to work. Can you make it look at the camp or yeah, no? Yeah, they've already had a change. <laughs> That's too much. Well, she submitted. So we're West Shore Drive. So you want to what? Can look at make, the... Yeah, can you make it to like ground level? No. On the tax map, you can see what the camp looks like by lot number, uh, map and lot number. That's what you're talking about, right, Chris? Yeah, so you can like kind of, of yeah. Yeah. He's looking like on Google Maps, you can click on it and kind of put you right in the street view. That's yeah. Yeah. There we go. <coughs> You'll be a little patient here. Well, we are. That's awesome. But, but we had to run with Pat's information before we lost it mentally of the tax map. Like a fifteen-second wait going on here <clears throat> so this is uh, at 730 West Shore Drive let me uh, blow these up for you and they haven't gone through the expansion no. already no. it looks nice it looks like a it looks like it's been you yeah, like that front porch area yeah yeah. Hmm. Because the retaining wall is kind of newish. So you can do a, um, if they had a, a, a porch or an open porch or deck, um, open porch, um, you're allowed to close it in. So, so that's that, what happened? I don't know. Yeah, it just one. looks new. Right. Well, it could have been newly sided or anything like that. Um, but, uh, Where is the old house footprint? You, I, maybe I misremember, but I thought we used to see for these things the old footprint and the new footprint. I don't know if it, this, so, is, this is what's showing on this. Right, the gray area. Yes. Yeah. The gray there's, area. There's the, the new footprint. one. Right. The gray area, I'd say, would be the new. Uh, That's not just walkway and. Yeah, I thought that was just walkway. Out. 
So this one she submitted. I don't know. Yeah, I believe that you're looking at the steps and. So you want the you looking for something like just like this or no? Well, um, and again, look at this one. We I've seen before when, we, when they propose a new home, either through a dotted line or something, they have an existing footprint. Mm -hmm. So we can tell how far they want to go back. Have they moved it back? Have they moved closer? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I think that would go with the survey, right? Not a Are they, gonna, are they moving it? They want to move it back, I'm assuming, right? Well, that's why we're really not discussing it because I don't have that information. That is, uh, you know, you guys wanted to just look at them quickly. I don't have the information that you're looking for because um, we don't, we're without Tyler Matthews tonight. Right. Yeah. Um, so, like, we're, I'm just happy to show you some of these photos of what's there and, and the locations of them, but other than that, um, the questions are to be asked to Tyler, not me, because uh, I'm not representing these people. Um, and he knows, we, we quickly went over it, but not enough to, for me to answer questions and not know, I, I can't provide you with information that I don't know, so. Uh. So, mm -hmm. so do you know, are we to understand that this is being demolished? Yes. Yep. That is the uh, tear down existing camp and build new single family house with attached garage. Uh, try to keep driveway in the same location and keep as many trees as possible between house and road. Is with the description for the proposed application. So Jason, I just have a question with regard to anyone's application. And it's with regard to septic systems. Mm -hmm. um, when they do an expansion or tear down a house, do they, is there a requirement to have... An upgraded system? Yes. Uh, if the system needs to be upgraded, yes. Uh, but how, this, how would you know? Is that, is that on record for how, like how many years yeah, the, it's been there? Yeah, we have, uh, everything's in file. Uh, I don't have the, their files on me right now. Um, just to know in what their se how old their septic is, you know, but they usually will have an inspection of some sort or, or, or if they, if they're, so a septic system is only allowed, um, your septic system is designed for the amount of bedrooms your house has. So if they're adding a, another bedroom and they only had a septic system designed for two bedroom and they want to add a third bedroom, then they have to upgrade their system, that type of thing. Um, okay. So just, Hypothetically, if if you if you're at Shoreland and you have a camp that you're going to demolish and you're going to put and you're going to keep a one bedroom, could you tie into the old system? Could you? Mm -hmm. yeah. So most definitely. Yeah, sometimes the system stay in the camp. Sometimes they change, they move yeah. the camp, and then they tie into the, the, the existing system. Okay. Yeah. And, and there's no there's no requirement for. Okay. Um, right. That's one. I don't, I, I, don't I don't know how to say it. I'm trying to say it carefully. Um, how do we know how old these systems are? Um, so systems are, uh, they're, they're in their, their files, and if they're not in their files, they can be found in the York Registry of Deeds. So there is a requirement in the application that they have to mm -hmm. have that looked at? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, have the, well, yeah, I mean, yes. So, so do um, lake associations generally monitor that no i don't they think don't. so okay not a lake association no, no. Well, i know that i i the reason that i ask is because that there um there's money for people who can't afford to replace their system um with an association of some sort mm -hmm. a decent size to garage. help them upgrade yeah mm -hmm. there's I don't still know. some 55 gallon drums in the ground <laughs> that's not camps. good yeah. Add mm. more driveway to it too. Yeah. They haven't moved back. 
still not 100 feet. Did you say, John? They, it is. This one does show the old location. Yeah. Okay. My bad. So that, that's oh, the, the old open. Location. The dark gray is a new one? Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like they have moved back. You're looking at, um, oh, look, yes, yeah, no, sorry, I'm looking at the opposite one. Just get a better video. I'm gonna try the old trick. Should give you some memory, I guess. Yeah, they're actually moving 26 feet further back from the water. Yeah. This is 54. They're moving to 80 feet from the high water mark. So we're That's an old. That's the old one. So the. Uh, 11 by, 11 by 17 shows the proposed um, building footprint. Is the dotted, uh, the dotted line, dotted area. So approximately 14 to 15 feet is going to be within 100 foot. Right, which is better than it is now. Right. Mm -hmm. The entire thing was. <laughs> right yeah. Away. The uh, the other one that's listed on the email that we got is parallel to the shore, and it's with it's behind the 100 foot setback. You know, you emailed them. Just FYI. I was confused. I wasn't sure which one they were doing, but Jason so the one that's that in up. the packet right now is the one that they want to do. Yeah. Um, and I told I told them to not to get things confusing. Don't give two options. Just do start with one. Uh, and if that flies and that goes, if it doesn't, then we'll propose a second. Okay. Um, and that's why you only have one. I didn't realize she emailed you guys all, all copies of the permits already. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I just I told him which one I asked him which one he, they wanted. And let's just stick with that one first. And then if that doesn't fly, then we'll, we're going to go the other way because the other way it made them their house long and narrow, and they didn't want that. And I think it had more disturbance to the to vegetation. The trees. Yeah, they're going to have to take more trees down and all this other stuff. So. I said, that's where we're, we're proposing. He's proposing one right now, the one that they act, the one that they want. So, can I ask you a question? No. Good. I'm going to ask it anyways. <laughs> but in this, <laughs> is the leach field? They're going to be driving over the leach field. So yeah. So if you part? have a, a certain d yeah, so they make okay. uh, tanks that are heavy duty and, and, and rated to be parked on. Okay. Because yeah. I know you used to con. Uh, there is a multiple systems. So you have leach fields that are, are Elgin systems or, or just pipes. You have right. uh, some that had chambers that weren't heavy duty chambers that aren't meant to be parked on. And then they have um, a lot of people just for the few extra dollars, they'll yeah. get a system that you can park on. Okay. You know, and then it saves space. Then you're not worried about, you know, whatever. And some of these lots, you have nowhere else to put it. So you put it in your driveway. Right. So this is a new system? Probably, yeah. I like I, I haven't looked in their file for the for the thing, and I can do that if you if uh, okay. if you need. But um, we'll have those. I'll have those answers for you for next for the for the next time. And 
and then, uh, like I said, we will just kind of just we we'll quickly go over these, and then we'll deal with it um, after the site walk. Thank you. This we'll is have really more, all the information, and Ty will be there to uh, to really answer the questions for us. I'll I'll just quickly go over and 13. look at the other one. I guess if you wanted me to yeah. do that. Yeah. That. Well, I guess when the house doesn't have a house on it. <laughs> yeah, it says there's only five thousand dollar building value, so it wouldn't be much right. if there's anything. It's interactive map. Look here to view. Oh, it's the wrong one. Hold on a second, then. One forty-three. That little tiny sliver right there. Ah. Oh, there it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. The shack. <laughs> it's not easy doing this without a mouse, so, <laughs> so you have to bear with me. <laughs> But you know how nice this is? I, I so appreciate this. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is helpful. small sliver it looks like also really tiny one oops it's on that that little cove side so it's facing uh, away from the lake but into the cove there yeah he's in Hubbard's Cove yeah, I think that's what uh, is it Ham's Cove or Hubbard's Cove? I think, it, uh, I think it's Hubbard's. Yeah. Could be wrong. Hubbard's Cove, yeah. So that's where he is. You know, it's a, there's a steep incline down to the water on that side. Yep. And that was one of the reasons he was talking to me about something, not being able to do something because of the, uh, that, that hill incline. So when you're looking at the map, where, where is the hill? 
head toward the water's edge. So if you're looking at that map. North, south, east, west. <clears throat> it's um, east. east. Uh, excuse me, where's the north? So north, south. He's west, right? West. Yeah. You'll see uh, Melsum Lake, Hubbard's Cove. Okay. In print. Yep. Yeah. And and that's where the incline is. You can see the set of stairs that goes down to the water. It's yeah. pretty decent. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah the they're really building? steep. They're dangerous. Right here. Yep. And where's the proposed? It's a pretty narrow lot. Which, which one's a proposed building? Way, in, way up? Uh, you can see it's right. a dotted one. It's up by... Um, way up by the... Near the road. That's a proposed septic system area. The original one's closer, right? Yeah. So he's moving it back. But I don't even see where it is, do you? I don't know said if that's the septic system, that square. Yeah, I just, thought that's a septic, I saw it after. That one? He said that's a, rec that's a septic, he said. This is where it is now. I thought it was there. It's here? Is this it here? Oh, he wants to move it, if you look in your, the, the. 90 feet, right? He wants to move back, so there's an X on the, the eight and a half by 11. He wants to go back towards that so that his garage, because there's a utility pole right there. He's looking to tie in from there, the utility from that pole um, into his garage. Is the existing house where the steps are at? Ashley, do you, no. do you have no. that in there? The existing house is... So he could bring it up and then use a pointer? Yeah, because... It was see, we had seen laser pointers before. Yeah, I think probably have one. So, so we understand. Tax map. Uh, yeah. 128, not 129. Are we on the right one? It's yes. so close, mm -hmm. it's hard to see what you're looking at. I get you, John. Oh. Yeah, see, I don't see it. Where is the house? Yeah, you had us on the wrong, we you were on the wrong one when we were doing this one. No, oh, maybe we weren't. <laughs> well, it's even smaller. I see where it is now. It's, it's, it's skinny. skinny. Yeah, real skinny. Whoa. Forty-three and twenty-nine. Yeah, it's so sensitive. <laughs> Nothing in here. Get it together. Ask, wouldn't it be easier to just see it next week? Yeah. yeah. Rather than it, it, I don't mean to no. be impatient, but I mean we have things we could actually work on and get done tonight versus things that we will go know. easier if we just wait and do. The right. I don't know. It's kind of helpful to orient the of time so you know what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. That's all. But I mean to see anyway. If I'm if I'm wrong. No, no. I, I just think it's helpful <laughs> to look so you you're walking in with a little bit of an idea of what. Yeah. So that little sliver is not the lot we're looking at. We're looking at the lot that's highlighted. Okay. So start over. I see. It's it's Both fine. Sides, yeah. No, it's fine. Yeah. It's helpful. I kind of know where it is, so I know the layout. Yeah. But I don't know what the building looks like. All right. Am I right by saying this? Tax map 142, lot one. Oh, they both are. Have you ever been down one. there? Yeah. But there's no building it's on it. It's real tight. And then it's in uh, both sides, I believe, they drop down. They're some, both in some areas, then you get down to a little low, and then it dead ends oh, way down in there. Everyone's Hershey? But it's... And so it's kind of like, like almost like it's... Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's a 65 and a 54 yeah, lot. You can fire a truck down there. You'd have to go slow, I know that. And you get the skinny one. <clears throat> um, okay, so we were doing something else here too, right? We were looking at... I'll go look at it. <clears throat> so he's looking to go back to where my cursor is. He, there's a utility pole right here. 
Yeah. Uh, and he's looking to move this structure towards this utility pool. Actually pick it up and move it? Well, tear it down. Tear it down and rebuild. And then rebuild back there, correct. Okay. Yeah, so there's no future site on that map for the house. And I don't know how close he is. I just know he wants to go closer to that pole. I'm not, I can't remember what Tyler had told me. And those are questions that we'll ask him, but that's kind of the proposed action of what they're trying to do, is get closer to that utility pole. I'll get a better idea to lay the land once we right. look at it. He's, yeah. he's probably getting some, some flat <laughs> flat turf. Somewhere. Yeah, no, that, that's <laughs> a very, uh, you, you fall on that hill, you're rolling right down to the water. Yeah. <laughs> Even from the road too, right? So the photo that you showed us of the building is not, not that, that is the that is the there's no that little sliver doesn't have a property on it uh, doesn't have a building on it oh, so the pictures you showed was I, um, are this yeah. mm -hmm. okay. i hope so see this that little sliver down the bottom uh, and then there's one two lots yeah see how that little there's thing nothing on it. I get yeah. It. yeah yeah so if you look at the tax map you can see the little sliver doesn't have a uh there's no structure on it right now okay um yeah so there's that that one is <laughs> and then if you look at the actual um the the print that we, he would provided us you can see the lot layout isn't designed as a wedge so thank you yeah, maybe some kind of right away yeah he the, that individual owned it's it is labeled in the same um enterprise hershey enterprise owns both properties so anyway those are the two properties that we'll look at with um, mr matthews on the 21st weather permitting well, no walk in the rain no snow i don't <laughs> like snow that. yeah we get we get into the snow time <laughs> Yeah. We're all set with those then. Yeah. We're going to move over to uh, the round table discussion for the zoning ordinances, definitions, and proposed changes. Um, I did bring in, and I don't know if you want to do it, I did bring in, the, I had Joe Stanley drop off a print for. Um, Should we wait for uh, Gavin's out? Does that matter? Uh, he wants that sign. No, it does not. Gavin, Gavin sustained from any voting last week, anyone, anyone. or whatever it was he. He voted, voted against. He voted against right. it. Yeah. Um, and you got your quorum. I think that uh, that's all that matters, right? All right. You're right. Uh, as, as far as my. We can do them now if you want to. Did you, did you bring them up or you left them down? Ashley, so. did you bring those? Yeah. Oh. Did I and Tails bring it by yet? I call, uh, last time I called him. Um, I asked him to get it in as soon as possible, and that was the last I've heard from him. I don't know if he's waiting to do the plan until he does that fence, but if you drive by Iron Tails, you'll he's see the wood there. all the woods there. So he's starting, but I'll reach out to him again here and remind him, I guess. Um, yeah. Our last conversation, he said he was gonna get a, a signed plan or whatever it was uh, to me, so. Yeah, I think that's all we signed. Right? Yeah, I'm going to sign one. <coughs> I don't have a pen. There were three Thanks. conditions, right? Should yeah, there's the right. things that we asked changed. Oh. Uh, there are yeah, the minutes. Oh, yeah. Pin the... Place the septic outside the 100 foot buffer, so it should be in the notes, right? It should be the last three conditions last three. that were printed on there, right? Place the septic outside the 100 foot in buffer. The we will, First no. proposed monitor well will be dug and installed prior to December 1st. Earth beam. Foundation to be, be pinned. pinned before it's poured by a licensed surveyor. Okay, there's the December 1st deadline there. Monitor there we go for the foundation yeah. layout, and there's the septic location. So yes, and there he removed um, 
we had on some of the building uh, he wanted some of the drip edge uh, or whatever overhang yeah, removed yeah. Um, in the gable end on the pavement. He left it on the gable end on the utility room side. The other side, because he's gonna have it. He wants to show the overhang that he's gonna have. The utility room side. Oh, the back end of the building. Back yeah, the septic end. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the, the septic. The sept where the septic is, I believe. Right, yeah. If I remember. So he's gonna have. He wanted to show the overhang that he's gonna have on his building. And that's what that's for. But the rest of it, um, will have drainage, gutters, drip edge, whatever is required. Yep. Okay. Away. It's like a those are hot off the press. I got those at like five thirty tonight. <laughs> Last week on that one. That one? The docks, weren't we? Um, wharfs and yeah. Yeah. Not, I'm ready to address that. Want me to go ahead? Yeah, sure. Okay. So what we're looking at, in case there's anyone at home who's watching, uh, yeah. Our warrant articles that were considered at the June 19th, 2021 town meeting, and specifically um, related to piers, docks, and other shoreline construction. And so that's on page five, if anyone is looking. Um, so there were some changes in verbiage. 5.16.1a general requirements. Um, I'm going to skip over A. Um, and what I'm going to do is go through D through H, which would be stricken from the general requirements. Were we to once again adopt this proposal and put it forward? in a warrant. So proposed to be stricken were that causeways, marinas, wharf stocks, or permanent structures, um, a prohibition on them exceeding more than 10% of the width of any stream 
measured at the normal high water elevation. C provided that access from the shore shall be developed on soils appropriate for such use and contract, um, constructed so as to control erosion. That would be removed if we went forward as it is written currently. Uh, D, the location shall not interfere with existing development or natural beach areas. That would be stricken. E, the facility shall be located so as to minimize adverse effects on fisheries. That would be stricken. F, the facility shall be no larger in dimension than necessary to carry on the activity and be consistent with the surrounding character and uses of the beach, the temporary pier dock, or wharf shall not be wider than six feet for non-commercial uses. That would be stricken. G, no new structure, structure shall be built on, over, or abutting a pier, wharf, dock, or other structure extending beyond the normal high water line of a body of water or within a wetland unless the structure requires direct access to the water body or wetland as an operational necessity. That would be stricken. And H, no existing structures built on, over, or abutting a pier, dock, wharf, or other structure extending beyond the normal high water line of the water body or within a wetland shall be converted to a residential dwelling unit in any district. That would have been stricken as well. So I, I don't really know what the intent was in amending this, um, these general requirements, but um, my suggestion is that we not move forward on this. I think we're, we're striking an awful lot of protections that I think should be there um, and really focusing only on causeway bridges, marinas, permanent docks or any permanent structure. And personally, I think that's a big mistake because if somebody wants to build a wharf, they can pretty much build it any size they want and where they want and build on top of it and so forth. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I would agree. There's a lot of bathwater going there. Um, the, my recollection of the reason for this was, as currently written, uh, every temporary dock that gets put in in June and taken out in September, the code enforcement officer is supposed to go uh, say okay. And so I think the idea was to get out of that business where, you know, there's not enough hours in the day to, to go verify every temporary dock. So it, it revolved around permanency. And I think you make some good points there, Bernie, that the, um, there's some bathwater there. Maybe they shouldn't have been thrown out. I don't remember any rationale for that. Other than the temporary ones, um, that go in and come out, there was no need to uh, take the CEO's time up to go look at every single one of them. But, um, were you finished? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it would seem to me that this would only apply as to wharfs, temporary wharfs, that are being newly constructed because it says no causeway, we'll just say wharf because that's what we're talking about. No wharf or any permanent structure shall be constructed in, on, over, and so forth. And so if, if you already have an existing wharf and it's in compliance as to size, length, width, location, and so forth, it's not like every season you go to put that in, you're constructing it and it has to be inspected. The way I read this is it would apply to if somebody wants to build a new wharf, then it has to be meet this criterion and be subject to inspection. Yeah, I can see That's that. That's I read it. I, I can see that interpretation. I'm just trying to re report to you what the old CEO told us. Yeah. Or told <coughs> us. Yeah. Us three, yeah. anyway. 
yeah. was it was too much work for them, essentially. Right. I mean, if you go to put your dock in or wharf in next spring, nothing's changed with it. And I don't see where any neighbor, for example, is going to be upset that you're putting the same thing in you did last year. If you didn't have one last year and you're building a new one, or you decide, oh, I want to double the size of my wharf, I'm going to build a new one or add on, then somebody might have some issue with that, and then they'd have some recourse if it doesn't meet this. But I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I just don't see where this means that they have to go out and inspect all of them. They would need to inspect new ones. Can you, um, can you go find me the paperwork? Is it, is it true that for the state, when the state Pardon. statute changes their language, they send it to the town? And we're supposed to review it and change the language in our ordinance. For example, the comprehensive plan last time was 2005. Right. Um, I, it may have something to do with that because I think that the state is taking more responsibility to, to regulate the lakes and the docks, and because it's it's too much for the CEO of the town, as just as. Um, John just yeah. explained. Yeah. But I'm wondering if part of this is coming down from the changes in the state language. I just tuned in. I don't know, I but. <laughs> well, I'm trying, I was trying is to it? find the paperwork that we had from last week and oh, nice. my folder. Yeah, so. What we mm. were talking about is the For example, proposed structure. change to right. general requirements at the town meeting we it. as to piers, docks, and mm -hmm. shoreline construction. Mm -hmm. Motivated. Do you know anything about, I think this preceded you, as to why that why was they were getting rid of being it? Because, because there's, like she was saying, it, uh, too much for us to hand, you know, too, yeah, we don't go and inspect docks and stuff like that or new, you know, things that. Yeah, just we're getting away. We're getting away from docks. We're getting away from right of ways. All these other things that, we, that um, I don't really. I guess why are you asking me why we're not doing them? No, if you knew why this was put forth, because Pat thought there might have been a change in state regulation. Well, John thought that the previous code enforcement officer had talked yeah. about the inspection aspect. Right. And I was saying the way I'm reading this is it would only, there would only be inspections required if a new dock was constructed versus mm. it doesn't mean that every dock that goes back in the water needs to be inspected. Right. Um, we don't, fall we don't even require a building permit, so why would I inspect it? If somebody wants to build themselves a dock, they don't come in and ask me for a building permit for the okay. dock. Yes. Well, great. Then there's no. Right. It doesn't make your job any more cumbersome. Well, well however. But, but currently, it's required. And then it says, uh, "Did you read B?" What's required? Sorry, for him to look at. It. For him to look at it. And that's why I think they were trying to go to permanent rights. That's by state law. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so they. they so yes, you you're permanent. You're right by saying that it is, we are supposed to be doing it, but we've kind of gotten away, we don't do it. We've gotten away from it, so that's why we need it out of the ordinance. It's like someone calling me about it right away, we don't deal with it anymore. We, you know, that's their own, you know, civil matter. Civil where, where they used to have their opinion on it, but now there's just too many, there's too many complications involved in the legal aspect of it all. So we're not allowed to answer any questions about right of ways. Um, but other than to just to guide them to seek um, counsel from a lawyer of some sort, uh, someone that knows their real estate, uh, you know, real realty background or, or something like that, deeds. So. <coughs> so that's why we wanted it out of it. And yes, it does, it does precede me. So I don't really know the whole background of it other than the fact that I, I don't 
I was told don't to, not to do them, and if somebody calls, you don't permit them, really, in a sense. Thank you. But if somebody wanted to put in a permanent dock, they're going to sink. They're going to go to the state too. They're not. They're, they're that's letter B. Yeah. Yeah. B B. I believe the state is the only one authorized to put in a permanent yeah. construction. <clears throat> I have some information on that because I just went through this whole thing with the right of way over on Moon Pond. Jack Collins' grandfather owned a lot of that property. He's the only one living there on the who doesn't have. Um, water access. So it was a little six foot right away between two buildings. He is the only one who's got a deeded right away to it. So we wanted to put in a dock at the end of it to use it and got into some issues about putting that in. So he dealt with the state, he called the state and he says it's up to the town. He actually had to pay $75 to get a building permit to put that in with the last code officer. Not sure why, you know, all that happened, but we did get into some issues with the neighbors and everything else, and then these issues about having two, two boat widths between docks came in because this guy put his, moved his dock right onto the property line, and we put our dock in, we only got two feet you know, because we only had six feet to work with. There was all these issues and stuff, so I did some research, and Jack did some research, and the stuff that came down was all the state was saying that it's up to the town to uh, handle these issues. And then, of course, you know, <laughs> yeah, like I said, but, you know, the state law and things like that, and that's why I came up with these definitions on definite, on permanent temporary docks, temporary docks are being ones you pull out every year, because you don't want them falling into the water like ice shacks. You're supposed to remove them before the ice melts. State was the only ones authorized to put in any kind of permanent dock, like at a public boat launch. boat launch. And that was pretty much it. Nobody else has the authority to put in a permanent dock. So they're all considered temporary. But then your definition for temporary has to be specified as to what clarifies a temporary dock. Right, and that, that's where we got hung up in the, yeah. uh, at the town hall. Yeah. You know, the defini definition of temporary, and that's where we first went. Yeah. I understand where you're going. We're throwing out some, some bath water here, too. Right. Um, and so I, for the last meeting, I looked at some other ordinances and the definition of temporary, take away structure and all that other stuff, almost everyone I looked at was just time-based. Mm -hmm. So if it's in seven months or less, it's temporary. If it's removed, if it's not over the water for less than uh, five months, I guess. I might have that wrong. But anyway, it was time-based. It's over the water for that amount or less, it's temporary. And then at the town hall, they were getting into, well, what about those docks that lift? And is it a structure? And mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> the simple answer is if it comes out over, over the water, it's a temporary dock. Now, whether it's a structure requires something else. Well, that's kind of why I went to the definitions, because that sort of no, explains as long as... a permanent dock for you on Great East. For the thing. As long as it isn't over the water. Yeah. Someone just hang you lift them up and just barely over the water. <laughs> it's not, it's not uh, coming out. It's, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, to it. me, that would be that it got to raise it so it's above the high water mark. Right. Yeah, permanent to me would be anything that's fixed, like in my explanation with the pylons or like a fish in the water or something yeah. like well, that. That's on Great East. That's permanent, temporary. Oh, that's permanent. What is it mean? It's a big giant concrete. Oh yeah, oh, it's concrete. <laughs> yeah, it's concrete. yeah, something like that. <laughs> is that the Mason's house? <laughs> yeah, that's permanent. They used to some of them. Yeah, I remember oh, yeah. some <laughs> places <laughs> did have those on lakes back in the day. So a permanent dock requires state involvement for the DEP, and then it requires a finding by the town us mm -hmm. that a temporary dock is not feasible. Correct. My understanding is the state owns the, the, the bodies of water. Right. 
and the town is charged with policing it. <laughs> I guess. I yeah, if you're in the water okay. and someone comes out and says in, you're in, in for someone's property, this, you're in the water. They can't say anything because yeah, state. yeah, it's like. 250 feet around all the ponds and stuff were in charge of all that but once you hit the water then you know that's public property right yeah okay. we came into that uh, high water mark and the low water mark which is opposite than the ocean with great bodies of water because they use the high water mark for property lines verifications um, and stuff like that so you know as long as it's beyond that that's why I came in with the right of way. The right of way had to be that the guy who owns the property sets the conditions for the right of way. If you can only walk on it, then you can walk on it. And that's the condition he sets. Jack Cullen actually owns Middle Road, but it is a right of way for everybody using it. But he sets the conditions as to its use, mm -hmm. which means he can limit the size of the trucks coming on it because it tears the road up, mm -hmm. which is doing. But that's how we learn about all the right of ways and everything else but everybody on middle road has a, a deeded right to use it as long as they don't block it and so on and so forth so the right of way is not, not a big deal somebody owns that property so it goes back to the property owner as to who can use it and for what use and that's what he was saying the person that bought it had, right has nothing to do with the town court officer or anybody else right. it's the property owner so it's the person that bought so the right away, right? It's the, who, it's well, the deeds. It's not every the right away is sitting on somebody's property. It's, it's right. the deeds, not the property owner. Right. Whatever is deeded to that to that right, right away, it, the property owner can't do anything if somebody's deeded to it. He can't tell you you can't use it because yeah, it's right. Not. But and he can say whoever can, holds the deed in their hand, that that deed right. states that they have access to that the body of water through that right away, and that's then that's. That's what I was saying. They're right. Yeah. So, but it's not the property owner. It's, it goes by deeds and, and things like that. So you, the property owner can't tell you you can't use it just because he doesn't like you. If, you, you know, right. your, if your deed says you can use that right away, and it will tell you what you can do with it, if it's to and from the water or you know, if you're deeded to have a dock on it. But we're not going to get into that right now. Really uh, we're talking about we're talking about docks and piers and right and permanent Trying things. We're, we're, we got side side yeah, track. Yeah. yeah. Well, it all had to do with the so, docks. But so it is. Yeah. It's already codified. It was item I that we were talking about changing it to B because of the other verbiage being removed. But uh, it it is already codified. New permanent piers and docks shall not be permitted unless it is clearly demonstrated to the planning board that a temporary pier or dock is not feasible and a permit has been obtained from the Department of Environmental Protection mm -hmm. pursuant to the Natural Resources Protection Act. So that takes care of permanent docks, the steps people have to go through. Kicks it right up to the state. And, yeah. and then what I'm suggesting is that to remove all the other verbiage about wharfs and what we call temporaries would then mean that people can build pretty much whatever size they want and where they want and without concern about soil or erosion and build on top of it. And whether we issue a permit for them to build it or not, which I'm told we don't, whether we inspect it or not, I don't think really matters so much as if they violate that ordinance, then there's some recourse. If some a neighbor complains, hey, they're building a wharf out there you know temporary but it's 20 feet out then we have a means of saying you're in violation of this if we remove all of that then we really don't because we've only regulated permanent docks Thing, bring all this back in. I would leave it alone, is what I'm suggesting. But, and I guess what I would say is if there are people that preceded most of the people on this board, or you know, some of you were here, um, but that their recollection for the reason for it is different, or they can come in before the board and say, no, this is why we wanted to do this and explain it, 
Well, Gavin, Gavin was a part of this. Right. Uh, so it's a, he it's was. A unfortunate thing that he's not here right yeah. now to go over yeah. this. But, um, Let's make a motion and wait for Gavin. What's up? Um, maybe it'd be a good idea to have Gavin come back and we can answer that question. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't before we continue any further on the docks. Yep. Yeah. It is a big one. Yeah. Right. I agree. It could be very because if there's obviously a reason that they wanted it gone. And he said he said it once before and I can't draw a blank on it for some reason. Because we looked to him before we presented all these. Right. And so he would kind of the history. Right. Yeah. Can we just to follow that thread? Just um, understand we got to talk to Gavin. But if if we um, say temporary is permitted, can it be footnoted temporary permitted in accordance with the appropriate paragraphs you're re referring to? Because then that that kills the stone of you're not going to go out and look at temporary docks. Mm -hmm. But we have recourse if they mm -hmm. build it 30 feet out in a 40 foot stream. Right. No, I, that's, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's a, a decent idea. Um, yeah. There's still going to be those times where someone calls and says, hey, this individual put this out there, you know, and then I might have to go out and look at it anyway. Well, but, and that's, you know, that supports what Bernie's saying, because right. if you had to go, it'd be pretty clear. Is it, you know, too far out? Is it too wide? Is it, they build a, you know, hotel on it, whatever. <laughs> the acting hotel. A yurt. I'm confused. Well, I'm, I'm just assuming um, Gavin says there's some rationale that, uh, you know, that we should get out of the business of temporary docks. Um, if we leave in what Bernie has highlighted, which are good ideas, right? We don't want it to go all the way across the stream. Um, so the chart then would have P for permitted for temporary. And then we get back to the definition, which again, I argue is time driven, um, but also footnoted. Like there's some others that I've seen that are footnoted like R9 or something. So P10 and have a footnote that says that, um, it's a temporary is permitted as long as you don't violate the, the highlighted things here. Okay, thank you. And that's assuming there's a rationale. Maybe, you, you know, if we don't change it, there's R's there, but, um, you know, it's enforced by exception. Somebody calls and bitches. Hmm. Then it's up to Jason. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see that. <laughs> makes sense. We move on to the next one. Uh, the rental, right? That was the other tough one. Yeah, um, rental was one we we're struggling with. Um, yep. we skipped over structure. <coughs> we can't touch structure right now. We got to go to. We got to wait on that one. The definition that's in here yeah, is not the one that's we in here. We can't touch it right now. There's a until uh, that appeal, if there's no more appeal, we can't touch it, I was told by our town, town lawyer. Um, because if we go and change it right now, we have to, not that it, even though it won't change until June, we, we have to skip over that one for right now. The timber harvest, so short-term rentals, and we have timber harvesting. 
Timber harvesting. I think that was the one that passed. That, uh, timber harvesting one did pass? Yes, that one of them so. did. I think it was timber harvesting. I'm just looking at um, some stuff that we had photocopied. It's such a crazy meeting. So you were looking to add short-term rentals? Yeah, there was, uh, again, a previous board had put together a uh, mm -hmm. change to specifically call out short-term rentals and then levy some requirements, basically safety requirements, right. Right. Uh, on those things. And I think they brought in, you know, some of them were recommended by uh, Chief Smith. Yeah, yeah, worked very. I'm told they worked very closely. He was very articulate about it. Yeah, he's town hall. yeah, very. Um, and the hue and cry was well, it was hue and cry. The expense it was expense, but then the ex not the excuse. One of the rationale was we don't do anything about longer term rentals. Right. Which. Um, is is true in terms of the land use chart they aren't called out I think during like the town meeting you weren't there for that it was I mean the public hearing for this were you there for that no um we're at the school no we did it I think it was a zoom right the okay no yeah, it was zoom the short term uh -huh. rental there's mostly late people that because they yeah they, and they felt kind of attacked I believe but, or I remember that one woman did some changes to a house for the rental but they weren't meeting up to what they were right. asking she had already sunk some money into a property yeah I forgot her name but that stands out. How about an egress window? Egress and then... Fire extinguisher. Fire it? extinguisher, then the one was... <coughs> septic. It's in here, septic, but the other one was having the property owner within an hour or so on. Or within an hour. Or, and I think, they, I think they were kind of arguing, well, maybe if they live in Connecticut, what happens if they have someone that can deal with it within an hour? Like, you know. So I have. They, uh, they live in Connecticut. They should have a property means someone taking care of it, anyways. But if you're going to get money, and it's a business, I think it's commercial. It would, it would be almost a commercial I mean, entity in a sense, right? You're you're making money off a property. You know, if I go and, and you know, I just went to a commercial property for uh, an inspection, and fortunately they didn't pass because they didn't have fire extinguishers properly labeled and, and, and marked and, and things like that. And so if you're, you're making money off your property, I think, in my opinion, is mine is. In the long, I mean, if we add it to the long term, we, we kind of just kind of have to change this up a little, the wording too, to add on to the long term. So, which I, I mean, you know, if it's a long-term rental, they're going to know the people in the town by living here. But it should still be up to, you know, smoke detectors and the egress window for, just for safety. Uh, you know, I kind of, you know, things happen. Are they saying that uh, in order to justify a short-term rental, it has to be, you, it's no longer than 60 days? It's not, they're not, we're not talking about just Airbnb, we're talking oh, about somebody who might do a seasonal rental for the summer. Yeah, I think that's what their thought, thought process was on yeah. it. This to authorize use of lengthy, legally existing single family dwelling for the accommodation of short term guest accommodation during, during of up to 60 days. So, right. sure. Can I, my starting point on this, goes to the definition rental of a legally existing single-family dwelling 
whole house rental for a duration of up to 60 days at a time. It's on page eight at the bottom. So are there not... Oh, you have a different... Are there not multi-unit homes in Acton? Mm. At all? I'm sure, I'm sure there are. It's hard to name I mean, them. Huh? I could, yeah. It's hard to name them. But yeah. No, I don't need... So, but if there are... There's a like couple. Like, if I own a duplex, and I decide I'm going to rent out half of it as an Airbnb, why would you not want to regulate that? That's not a single family home. There are a couple so, that I know that are more than like a multi right. unit. So I, I'm just questioning the wording. Why is it just a single family dwelling or whole house versus <clears throat> any short term rental of up to 60 days? Because again, if I have a duplex, then it's okay for me to do it. Or um, also, in the, new the rental of the whole unit versus, a, you know, I might rent out a bedroom in my home as an Airbnb. That's very common. Should that not, it shouldn't it just be any rental of 60 days or less or up to 60 days to get at what we're trying to regulate? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And well, if you look at the definition that was found, did you read that? No. I mean, we already have in our definition of a dwelling unit includes rentals, but to your point, it doesn't. It wouldn't include a bedroom. It includes if they got a kitchen and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's already in our our definition of a dwelling unit. But Airbnbs a lot of times two rooms. You oh, yeah. you rent a room and you might have kitchen privileges or not, or use of the living room or not. So can, can we just go back to what Jason was talking about when he mentioned the word commercial? Mm -hmm. um, I'm just thinking about, there were questions asked about if somebody had um, a place of, uh, they had enough property, they had their camp and they had enough property to rent out some place for people to camp. Mm -hmm. And so then that becomes a campground, that becomes mm, a commercial. A, yeah, and that goes into planning board. Right, uh, site but it's still under a commercially in the truck. Mm -hmm. it falls it falls under commercial in the chart. So why wouldn't any rental fall under commercial regulations that are in the chart? Does that help I don't us? Know, I just threw the word commercial in there. Uh, just I, because I, know, I feel I think, I think it's good because it, they're getting they're when you're renting something out, it is a an enterprise it a, where you're making money. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and you should have insurance separate from your you know you you homeowners. right to be properly insured most insurance companies require an endorsement mm -hmm. for these short-term rentals. But whether it constitutes a commercial enterprise or not, I think is subject to interpretation because that's one of the complaints that like hotels and innkeepers have is, you know, we have to meet all that criteria of commercial we have to have licensing and so forth and people that just do Airbnb out of their home are spared that mm -hmm. and that expense. Trying to fly under the radar. I, I just remember there were people who were um, upset because they didn't feel that, they felt that the regulations that were being placed upon the Airbnbs should also be placed on anybody's home. And, and that kind of falls under when you get a building permit, oh. right? <clears throat> I mean, you're, you're being regulated that way. And one of the things that, Rick's, that yeah. the fire chief was trying to point out was that, you know, a lot of these people who are coming for a week or a weekend... Don't know where they are. They don't know, they don't know where they are. Um, they're there to have fun. Um, it's usually, some, not always, but it can get a little bit more crazier than someone that's there all the time. Um, so, like, fire safety was a big thing, and then the egress of things, something happened, as well as properly labeled exiting, I think, and, and instructions of what to do in case of emergency and where to go and Hosting who to call. Address. And the numbers, yeah. And, yeah, the num and, every, yeah and, and you're supposed to have the numbers on your house anyway, you know. And then, like, phone, like phone numbers, right? For phone number and the address. I mean, at that meeting, there was, there was a fire in town just a few days before mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and they didn't know where it was. The guy couldn't yeah. tell them where it was. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Is that the one that was on Great East? I don't remember now. Yeah. 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 Because there were, it was a house, but then it had a, another dwelling on the property on the water. So it's kind of, you go to the house, it's up here, but then the actual camp was... Down below. Yeah. So I think I'm here, and we have, instead of just fo focusing on short term, we focus on rental, dwelling rentals, or dwelling, what is the term we already use? Dwelling unit rentals. So Nick, short term or long term, and just call it? Yeah, um, so what is, what but our about? current definition of that, uh, to Bernie's point, would, would you, those one rumors that have kitchen privileges would still fall, get away, or fall out from under it. On page 23 of the ordinance, dwelling unit residential. The term shall include manufactured homes, rental units that contain cooking, sleeping, and toilet facilities, regardless of the time period rented. Oh, this does say duplex, too. And the units in duplex apartment houses, multifamily dwellings, and residential condos. So I, I think we could probably leverage that definition, but still not covering if somebody rents a room, which I didn't realize people did. Yeah, it's pretty common. Is it really? Yeah. I don't know about here, yeah. Yeah, but no, certainly I, I was starting to pop up. I, went on Air, I was on Airbnb a few weeks ago, and it was, I mean, there was a, an event that was going on somewhere else, and so people to capitalize on it will rent out a room or two. Oh, yeah. And someone, right. one, 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 I thought you were was renting the whole house, because for the price it should have been the whole house. But um, they were renting oh. out three separate rooms. For long. Actually, yeah. I did that years ago at the class at a weekend, but I rent, it was a house, like an apartment building, and you rent a room. So if a person does want to rent out a room, and we would like to try to make it safe for the renter, is there a way that we, we could uh, maybe come up with for Jason having to inspect it if they apply for a permit. Would it would be me or the fire. It would be me or, or Rick or some, some like sort of chief. requirement. Well, I think I think I, 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 just, I don't want to cover wanna be the rooms. covered under. You're going to get some people that comply with it and then some people that don't. You know, that's I think, I think that's how it's going to work. Rick was kind of involved in that and too with the inspection part of like the smoke detectors and stuff. But so I thought he. I could be wrong, but I think in the town meeting he did say that he was would go around right. to those places. He did. Sure did he? He would. You know what might make sense is to look at other uh, municipalities, like in Portland. Reader. Um, there are so I can use rules governing Portland search, and also anyone. Like I here. had a single family home in Portland, and I leased it out. I had to pay an annual fee to the city of Portland, which went for to pay for these inspectors mm -hmm. to go out. And they, they did come to the house initially. And every year there's a renewal that comes. And, you know, for example, they, they come in, they look at the size of the windows. And, um, you know, one of the things I had never thought of was they said, yeah, your windows and, and there was a porch, there was a roof. If you needed to get out, you could go out that window and get out via the roof. But the window was not big enough to accommodate a firefighter and his or her equipment to get into the house. Um, those are the types of things. Uh, they, they checked for your fire alarm and CO2 alarm and all of that. And, and again, the, the revenue was based from that annual registration fee. So you had to change the window? I did not. Nope. They did not make me change the window. Now I had other windows in the house that were big enough. Oh, okay. So um, I think what he said to me was, were you ever, you know, if you're going to change the windows, then they would have to be 
big enough. But probably if none of the windows had been big enough, mm -hmm. then I would have had to have changed them. Okay. Because there was, there were two means of egress. It was an issue of whether a firefighter could get in those back windows. Mm -hmm. They could on the side windows because they're big enough. Yeah. That sounds logical. But it may help us in terms of not reinventing the wheel mm -hmm. to look at other jurisdictions, how they regulate and what the rules are. Doesn't mean we're going to adopt all of them or adopt them as they're written, but you know, there may be a lot of things we wouldn't even necessarily think of that have already been. I would think you'd almost be looking at this more from a concern for the safety of the renters than anything else. That's it. So That's it. requiring an inspection would be a minimum. How much that would cost to go out and do an inspection like that would be something we could negotiate and say for a fee, you can do this because you need to have it inspected for safety, mm -hmm. for fire extinguishers, for egress. So you have to set guidelines yeah. for an inspection though. You can't, and like, uh, we just don't go, you know, obviously we'd have to no. make a list of things in order to do the short term rental or rentals in general. You need to abide by these standards mm -hmm. um, and you know, and that and that would be your inspection, but you, yeah. Excuse and that's me. what they tried to do in yeah, the short term that. one. They called out an annual inspection and they listed <coughs> the requirements. Yeah. And I think they tried to target the short term more than all the rentals because short term your turnover is obviously a lot more. You, people aren't, you know, someone who's renting, someone might be renting a property for five years is a pretty well knowledgeable of the area and things like that, you know, but you have out of staters or out of towners that come, they don't, but, know, they don't know what's going on. But then if <coughs> they're renting out for say like the five years, they should have to come in like. Sure, you should still get an annual inspection possibly, right. you know. Um, and then that way people, if there's a complaint of something constantly being broken or whatever, then there's a record of it not being up to date as well, I would assume. That's probably why we're, you're host in Bowling. They did that. Yeah, I agree. I think there's probably some work that's been done on those already we, we could look at. I would be happy to commit to trying to get short-term rental and general rental requirements um, from Portland and or South Portland because mm -hmm. I know they both, I know South Portland regulates short-term, I don't know if they have the same uh, long-term rental requirements that Portland does. Or, or, another, or another lake town too, we could check and yeah. see like Sebago Lake or area. Yeah, Sebago up there would be a good one. Because right. it's lake. I can look around yep. up there too. Yeah. So. I can try and find some you too. Check Sebago or lake area? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think you'd probably find more in general requirements in Portland or South Portland versus rural areas too. Yeah. And you know, with a long-term rental inspection, it can also go to protect the landlord because if you don't go regularly to see your property and they go in to do an inspection and they see that the tenant has is a hoarder and couldn't safely get out of the house, for example. Right. You wouldn't have any way of knowing that as a landlord, you know, unless you go in and if you're dealing like with a hoarder, they're going to do everything they can to not have you come in. So it does protect the landlord from things that he or she might not be aware of. 
Or maybe there's a fire extinguisher, but it needs to be recharged or replaced. And just, or, you know, they destroyed it. None of his, or the landlord's mm -hmm. yeah. eye. So. You probably do that on a short term and do a yearly inspection too, if you wanted, right? And then it puts short more, term? I would yeah. assume, yeah. yeah. That's what, what it was, the way it was originally yeah. written was yeah. for an annual. Yeah. I think that's why Rick said he'd help oh, Chief Smith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. said he would, uh, annual permit from the building department and subject to an annual inspection is what we had written on the permit required or the previous previous board did. It also goes on that only one short-term rental unit per lot is allowed so that you can't rent out rooms. Yeah, so I'm, I had I just look, I just, you just read you that out and I just kept way, on reading, yeah. but that. Yeah, you could read it that way. If you had three rooms that you wanted to rent out, yeah. Which, which one is that? It's just at the it's bottom of the, right here. at the end of the permit required. Or if you had a multi-unit place or you have some late, houses that have a, an additional do an ADU you can't rent out both of them you know I'm just yeah. trying to interpret that right there well, it says per lot per lot right yeah so okay. some some lots have two dwellings on it right like the boathouse yeah. Yeah. yeah or or a additional dwelling on top of a garage yeah. Um, yeah. an attached ADU um, in law apartments, things like that, you know, so. Mm. Um, can we go back to the day of the town meeting? And I left there thinking that these are the things that need to be fixed. Um, because I, I was just, I couldn't believe that it didn't pass. It was a safety issue. It was all about safety. It was all about protecting the, the town from, you know, being sued. Um, somebody stood up and, you know, talked about how there was a fire and, and everybody was sued. So I was thinking there were just, just a few things that I heard. One that, that I can't stop thinking about, you know, was the money, what, what they get, they get a return for their investment. Mm -hmm. But, but there were other things. Um, can, can we just revisit that? Does anybody else remember what those things were other than the money? Well, the, one of the big ones to me was somebody raised the point, you don't address long-term rentals, so why are you picking on us? And one of the selectmen actually said, yeah, I actually voted to send this to the town hall, but now that you say that, that's right. You know, we should address all uh, the rentals. So that was, that was one of the... One of the things they relied on in the selectman foot stomp. Well, it was one of the bigger. So, so did we, in our discussion, when we, we talked about this early on, did we address that in, in what we want to put in the language? Tonight? Tonight. I think we did talk about so what was all rentals, period, whether okay. it's short term or long term. Short or long. Yeah. We changed that to all now. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to be clear. And yeah, just yeah I think it's a good thing. Put it all in order. Yep. So... And our dwelling um, unit definition includes rentals, but it, it calls out sleeping, cooking, and bathroom. And so that doesn't, that definition, um, if we're going to tweak, we'd have to somehow tweak that to address what Bernie and Jason have brought up about renting a room out. Okay, so I thought that, okay. There's a lot to wrap your head around. Um, I thought that we talked about that just a minute ago. We did. Okay, so how did we address that? 
I think we said we need to address so nobody's come up with language. Okay, yet. I thought we had. <clears throat> I thought I heard somebody say something. Yeah, by reading this and trying to interpret it, it doesn't say just a room. You know, it does start off with a room or a group of rooms, but then that's tied into with, like you said, the cooking, yeah, living quarters. You know, so you might have a studio apartment. It'd be a a room, but it has everything in it. Right. Well, okay. That the definition I think we're looking at right now is that for dwelling unit. Residential. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. If you look to above that, there's dwelling, which is a fixed structure containing one or more dwelling units. <laughs> so maybe that's what we would use. Well, that's one of those ones I or, About the one in between the two. That's an ADU. That's like I was talking about the in law apartments yeah. or things okay. like that. Can we just add the word rental after the definition of dwelling unit residential slash rental room? Rental? Take. For profit? For. Would that suffice? Maybe we add a, I, I, I think we need to do more than that, Pat, because down below, again, it's limited. It doesn't address the single room. Right. Maybe we add a sentence at the end that says, um, what do we just add at the beginning? A rental room or group of rooms. Why, why don't we, why are, yeah. You know what I mean? Instead of rental room or a uh, rental room. unit that contains. Maybe that's how you do it. The term shall include manufactured homes. Uh, well, you're going to make a, a new definition completely for short term rental, right? Or long term rentals? Cause I, I was trying to avoid that. Mm hmm. If, if we could leverage, because we are, we already talk about rentals, right? Never mind short or long, we talk about them in that definition. Um, but maybe we have to because we're... I don't think you can, you can't tie a residential home into with a rental because then you're telling everybody that they have to go for a annual... Only if you're renting out a room. Only if you're renting it out. So somehow we got to figure out... That's residential, not commercial. If you're going to rent out your bedroom... We have to get work that into that dis that definition. Yeah. And does all do all is it going to be required that all people looking to do a short term rental, I mean, as even a long term, if you're going to include them together, do they have to go in front of the planning board? Because if that's considered, uh, that's not what we said. What we no. said was um, just be inspect uh, <coughs> permitted. Yeah, it was all all you. <laughs> it was all you and me. Just trying to keep department. you employed. You and the fire fire department, right? right. Or the the building department, rather. The annual permit came from the building department. I mean, do you really have to get all the way down to just renting a room? I mean. <laughs> that could be everybody. Well, let's say you go. Yeah, but I mean, they'll say I'm charging my kid rent for his bedroom. Yeah. Well, somebody I would say that. you accept family members and things like that. You know, maybe I don't know. If you're accepting money, if you're exchanging monetary, I'd love my son to pay me money to live in my house. <laughs> I charge my brother-in-law rent. <laughs> if you don't put a TV in the room, they don't stay that long. Yeah. It's a 
scientific battle. Oh, no, oh, now they get their cringe. cell phones. Oh, yeah, doesn't even, mine doesn't even turn his television on. Well, let's, let's see what we can come up with either from Portland or Sebago or, yeah, I, or whoever, somebody else around here in the Lakes region and see how they've addressed it. And then, because I was thinking I could mess around with that definition and, and just make this apply to all of them. Uh, but we might be missing something. There might be some, they might already address that single room thing. And we, could, yeah. we could benefit from that. Well, first, I think you need to change the definition of dwelling. Because using the word you're describing in the description is not a definition of a word. <laughs> I have a problem with that. Dwelling, a fixed structure containing one or more dwelling units. That doesn't tell me anything. What's a dwelling? That makes well, sense. Well, two down, it tries to tell you yeah. what, what it is. Or because it starts out, your definition start out if you read, like if you were just reading the page, you start with just dwelling. Then you go down to dwelling unit, dwelling residential. Right. So then they get into multifamily. So you've already should have already read the definition for dwelling. Types of dwelling. Yeah. But he's using the word dwelling. Oh, I see what you're saying. You don't use the word you're describing in this definition. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> yeah, but it's it's dwelling unit which then you see below what a dwelling unit is. I'm with you though, I, I, I understand. What's a, what's, a, what's a dwelling? Still doesn't tell me. I'm sure that we understand what the they're talking about, but it's not. Well, I shouldn't say I'm sure. I, I would presume, I would guess, I would hope that before a municipality like Portland or South Portland would have started regulating that they would have drafted and they would have had council review it and so i i would agree with john that we might get those documents and find that things are pretty clearly defined in ways that we might want to adopt or maybe not or maybe change but at least it gives a starting point so we're not starting with a blank sheet and having to reinvent the wheel I did look at the definition in Shapley for dwelling unit, and they had the same definition as we did. You know, because actually under dwelling unit residential, if you take that first sentence and put it under dwelling, that actually makes more sense to me. Because it describes what a dwelling is. It's a room or group of rooms designed, equipped, equipped. Then you get into residential or dwelling unit when they need it, actually. I just think it's in the wrong place. Or, to me, that dwelling unit residential better describes dwelling. Which one are you using? That one. Instead of dwelling unit. Kitchen, bathroom. The dictionary dwelling is a, a house, so. apartment, or a place of residence. I guess, yeah, a dwelling could be almost anything. A right. tent. <laughs> yeah. Tents, uh, does tents fall under dwelling? <laughs> <laughs> adamant on that one, aren't you? No, but he has a point. The tent. Yurts. Because they're renting yurts, so now I see. Well, to me, if you want to get to the bigger, bigger issues, and the, the definitions have got to be correct right. in explaining what you're doing because you're getting into a multitude of dwellings. What's a residential dwelling? What's a commercial dwelling? What's a permanent dwelling? What's a temporary dwelling? What's a dwelling? <laughs> First of all, if you can't describe what a dwelling is, how can you expand on it? Or well, they do say it's a fixed structure. Yeah, a fixed structure. But is a yurt a fixed structure? Okay. If 
period. <laughs> or period. I just don't like the idea of using dwelling units, containing one or more dwelling units. Well, one or more dwelling units is an apartment. <laughs> to me, because the description of a dwelling for residential unit is a room or group of rooms. Do you know what I'm saying? If we just Our definition of a dwelling would be something that you use for permanent, seasonal, or temporary living quarters for one family. That's our definition, right? It's kind of what we're trying to decide here. But what's our definition of dwelling? So I think Where that. Where are you reading that? Um, uh, out of the, the second paragraph, I uh, said. Yeah, oh, actually, okay. where yeah. where it says dwelling unit residential, that definition, that first sentence, to me, would be a better fit for dwelling. A room or group of rooms designed, that one? Yep. There's your definition for dwelling. Now, as far as dwelling unit, residential, you'd have to add something like not for rent. <laughs> or okay, Portland requires both short-term and long-term rentals to be registered and to meet criteria. And what they define it is a rental unit is the way they refer a rental unit can be a rented room apartment house or condominium for any length of time and then they for their short term is up to 30 days any type of overnight weekly summer or seasonal residential rental through airbnb similar websites and other means, and the long term is in excess of 30 days, leased on a month to month residential unit, leased or month to month. That's what I had here because it comes from a lot of your uh, realtors. Mm -hmm. This is where I got the depth, the, what their idea of short term and long term was, and it's you know, up to 30 days for short term, and anything after over that is long term. That could apply for any. <clears throat> so they don't call it a dwelling unit or whatever. They just say it's a room, an apartment, house, Property. or a condo. Right. They got a dwelling unit, one or more rooms forming a single unit for habitation by one family, including food preparation, living sanitary, sanitary, and sleeping facilities. That's our See, current for residential, but we wouldn't want to limit it to one family if somebody might. Well, they go, so that goes on to, um, this is on the Portland ordinance, city ordinance oh. definitions. Uh, so that's dwelling unit, then they have multifamily, single family, two family, and then um, they also had. Do they have a dwelling definition? I think that yeah, one's so stuck that. that was what I just read. Uh -huh. The dwelling definition on that one is, I'll read it again. A room or a group of rooms? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so take that first sentence off a of dwelling unit residential and make it the definition of dwelling. Right. Then we can get into, okay, if this is a dwelling, this is a residential, this is a commercial, I mean, then you could expand on it, expound on it over. But it includes your room. So that might help you. Well, yeah, this one says one or more rooms, but it, it's... So the, the thing that we are struggling right now is, is some of these people are renting just rooms. Yeah. That room doesn't actually, isn't tied to the, I mean, they probably are allowed to use the kitchens and stuff like that. Yeah. But, yes. but you know what I mean? Some of these people are just renting a, a room to stay at. You go to a hotel, sometimes you get a coffee maker if you're lucky in some yeah. of these smaller places. And that's kind of what they're doing. Um, I've seen def so the dwelling unit for so the definition of a dwelling unit doesn't really isn't suffice for renting a room. No. Well, can I? This just occurred to me. I don't think what we're talking about is the regulation of dwellings. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the regulation rental of rentals. rentals. Mm -hmm. And so, if we, if you agree, and if we follow that, then we're looking more at the language in Portland that pertains to rentals, whether it's a room, an apartment, a house, or a condo. We don't need to get into the definition of what a dwelling is. Not unless you're using it in your explanation of rentals. So that's I'm right. saying <clears throat> let's just bypass that. They, well, they go on to having a rooming unit, one or more rooms forming a single unit used and inhabited 
to be used for living and sleeping purposes by an individual or family, but not designed for food preparation in a, su in a suite of rooms. Each room that provides sleeping accommodations shall be counted as one rooming unit for the purpose of this chapter. Now you're talking about dormitory. That's yeah. what we're kind of talking about with the short-term yeah. rental situation. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. I got a room, but you got a room with privileges, which includes laundry or the kitchen or this or that. Or Some of them have a room with a garage, or the room is over the garage. You know? Right. Which kind of goes to my point, because yeah, we're talking if it's a room yeah. in a garage, then you would say... Well, that garage isn't a dwelling, right? So I don't have to comply with that. Whereas if you say no, what we're regulating are rentals. No, they, you're and correct. We've got two different things. So going yeah, on with I think what we're talking about and is regulating dwellings, yeah. rentals, not dwellings. Not dwelling. Most rentals are in dwellings. I'd agree with that, but. I don't know how I got under dwelling. I think he just went I back. Think, I think that we started there because. <laughs> yeah, then we got sidetracked because we went back to the, how the definition yeah. well, shouldn't, it, it was shouldn't describe yeah. what that is in the depth, however that yeah. works. Well, it was also to address the long term um, rentals versus. Residential. Yeah, right. I, I'm That's not what saying we were trying that, to do. I'm not saying that to be critical. I'm just right. saying I think You're right. it'll be easier this way mm -hmm. and more clear. Mm -hmm. If we just go with rentals, sure, right. and then we don't have to worry about all the things that we are understandably concerned about if we're focused on the definition of a dwelling. I well, like that in the fact that we don't have to worry about short-term or long-term rentals, just right. rentals, right. period. And then what constant, you know, and, right. and all the other stuff. <laughs> I agree. And yeah. they still list the same requirements if they're renting out a room because that's adding more mm -hmm. yeah. to, say, your septic system and whatnot. Because I'm sure they're gonna have to, you're going to have to let them use the rest of the bathroom. So. I mean, yeah, are we really concerned whether it's short term or long term? No. We're just worried about the rental. Because it's safety. Right. right. You know, cuts down on definitions. <laughs> Point. I, I agree with that. I'm just going with rentals. Because that's not even in the definitions. Yeah, see, rental's not even in there. No. Did anyone have an issue with the uh, insurance requirement that we asked for? Remember? I don't remember anybody bringing it up. Uh, What's that? Well, I was just reading through, like, the additional requirements, and number one, I was just was trying to remember if anyone had an issue with, like, the uh, insurance requirements, you know, for it. I think that was the expense, the general yeah. expense of that. I think it's general expense of the whole list, right. but That's put a value on somebody's life. Mm -hmm. You can't. Right. So a $200, well, when this would have gone through, a $200 window well, could I have think saved a life, but now it's a $500 window. I so. think with like long-term rentals, though, usually that insurance is up to the renter. Right. Right. That's why people buy rental insurance. Yeah, but they must have insurance on their house or rental yeah. building for, right. say if someone has a guest come over, that's not covered under their rental insurance. It's gonna be covered under, the, I would assume, the landlord's insurance. Well, yeah, but there's a difference between homeowner's policy right. and mm -hmm. landlord. a fire insurance policy that a landlord has. Right. And People may find that they're not properly insured. Right. They may not understand that if you start renting out your home, that your homeowner's isn't the proper policy for that. Right, because then it turns it into a business. Yeah. Right. Most of the ones I talk to require 
if you're renting out space, that renter must have their own renter's insurance. Right, but that covers the renter's liability, but right. not, the not, the not the homeowner. Not the homeowner. You know, not like if, I, if I'm renting an apartment and I spill water all over the floor and you come in and slip, mm -hmm. I was negligent. Not the landlord, he or she didn't spill the water, I did. That's different from the landlord didn't fix the front steps and I fell down. Right. So that's why people have mm. renter's insurance and for their personal property and their personal liability for off-premises. But, you know, there again, it's not our job necessarily to be... Police. Well, I mean, I think we can educate people. There are some benefits to having the commercial policy, like if it burns down and you did rent it, then you have some coverage for your loss of rents. You don't have that if it's a homeowner's policy, for example, or usually coverage for other people's property and, and so forth. But So I think some people may generally say it's an added expense and you're imposing this, but they don't necessarily recognize some benefits to them that might be there mm -hmm. by virtue of this. So just make sure you're at the town meeting to explain that. To, mm. <laughs> I'm just trying to find ways that you know we can assure it. that we've done a better job of presenting this and maybe it will well, I think through. adding mm -hmm. long term will help a little bit maybe. Yeah. Just because it's covering everything yeah, instead just of just all rentals. Yeah, pinpointing one group. Three. That's pretty simple. Yeah. Then the added cost, I mean, if they're making money, they, like I said, it's three, four hundred dollar window plus someone to put it in or, yep. or they can put it in themselves. What's the cost of a life? Right. Yeah. It's just tough Strike because some people thing. take it upon their, I think it's their job to take something that you've done, pick it apart, how you dissect it to find something that's wrong with it. Whether the, the intentions is right or wrong, they, that's what they do. Right. You know, it's, some people. Human nature. Yeah, some people are just, and that's what happened with when you know I sat in the the stands while you guys were the stands. I was in the stands. <laughs> he was I'm in the bleachers. to sit down. I'm not a resident. <laughs> Uh, okay. So I was, yeah, I was in the yeah. nosebleeds. <laughs> the, um, the, I mean, you got, they got beat up pretty good trying to defend the changes. Mm. Even well, the, even a lot of it was administrative. You know, a lot of it was you lined out K and K shouldn't have been lined out, you know, or it should have been L, not K. Right. And that was a good lesson learned for us. I mean, we're all new. Going, yeah. This wasn't our work. Yeah. But it's a good lesson learned. Right. But the way it lands, we send something us. forward next time. Be sure we're going to look it over. Well, didn't it you say time. that you guys had made some changes, and that's not what appeared in the actual? Yeah, the when we left it and sent it to them, whoever. I, I it got changed. It was the interim. It was the lack of help. It was. We went through problems. several versions, and, and I kept one version. We made all my notes on it, and. The version I had was not the version that got published. Some of them had screwed up lines, but a couple of them had the lines correct. Mm -hmm. The version that got published, you know, the, the letters and what got lined out, what didn't, one change got highlighted, one change didn't get highlighted. Somebody stood up and, and questioned that as a reason, you know, that it shouldn't go forward. Well, to me, that's administrative. It was clear it was going out. One, because it was lined through, one line through section had right. to be highlighted. One wasn't. There was that old fellow to the right next to, uh, he's sitting next to Dennis. I forgot his name. Yeah. But, but it's a good lesson learned. I mean, we, we have to, from an administrative standpoint, once we get the words the way we think they'll go, just to make sure there's no excuse from the standpoint that, well, you, you know, you made a M and N, and it should still be an M. Yeah, like Bernie said, proofread, and and we didn't get a chance to do that anyway. Yeah, but I think we already were struggling anyways. Cause it we was circumstances. Yeah, sure. and we didn't set it up. Yeah. You know, if we were here all here for these, yeah. it would have been a little bit easy to uh, defend them a little more. I think instead of you know just having one of 
our members defending it. So moving on, where are we now? Uh, solar panels. <laughs> I, did I, I, I got an email about that, I think. I didn't read it, I looked at it. Actually, you can leave if you want to. You can take that. Found a short prescription. <laughs> That's all that was in the Marion Webster dictionary. <laughs> See, that's not in here either. So. I'm going to excuse Ashley for the night. Okay. Yeah, so, I was just going to yeah. say just I letting you know how late we were going to go. Well, I don't care how late we go, I, I'm just not going to keep her here. Right. Well, you yeah. kind of set this one in motion for tonight. Like, Kind of get, get our wheels turning on it. I don't even know what time it is. It's almost eight, eight, eight o'clock. Oh, yep. Okay. <clears throat> I don't mind talking about whatever you guys want to do. I'm just gonna, because yeah, she's on an hourly right. situation, so she's out of here. It's yeah. just it's late and we have. Oh yeah, I Virginia. I, I well, think we made a lot of progress today. Yeah, I'm gonna move we adjourn. Okay. All right. You want to second? Second the motion. All in favor. The whole four and a half. <laughs> I'm over here. Well, no, it's, yeah, it's that fine. was a good. That, that was a good session. It was yes, for that.